Good morning. So today we're doing something a little bit different than what we normally do around here on the farm. It's late spring, almost summer here in East Central Alabama, and my dad's plum tree has made a ton of plums. And so we're going to go pick those and process those. Also, he's got a lot of blueberries. So we're going to be picking some of those as well and getting those probably just in the freezer. But the plums, I'm going to actually show you how we preserve those and what we use them for because it's probably a little different than um, what a lot of people do with plums. I think most people just make some plum preserves or plum jam, jelly, that kind of stuff. Uh, we like to preserve the pulp and make cobbler with it um, or different pies and desserts. So we'll show you how that goes. So we're going to head down to his house. He's about a half mile from us here on the homestead. it down here so we've got blueberry bushes loaded down with blueberries they're wet it's better than it being the heat of the day so it's nicer down here not quite as hot we got a little shade in the first part of this we do have sun down here at the end um, we'll try to work through the shade as long as we can but this is the plum tree and this plum tree is probably about 14 years old we usually have it make every other year just because it'll get hit by a late frost and lose all of the the little plums but this year it made we didn't get any late frost but it, it's so loaded down it's breaking the branches so we are going to get the bulk of these off today they're only really good for a couple of weeks once they once they make so we want to get these preserved and put up so we got the, the kids out here picking. Pierce looks like he's eating. They've got a little blackberry bush throwing this blackberry here too. So we'll get started with the harvesting. And then get you back up to the house where we'll show you how we're gonna preserve all of this. Most of the time we just freeze our blueberries. But freezer space is at a premium these days, so we'll see. Elizabeth did a lot of plum picking. She did really good. Um, this is our bucket blackberries of blackberries and blueberries. Blueberries, but yeah, there's a few blackberries in there, but mostly blueberries. A few that are a little bit red, but they will all be really tasty. And this is what we picked in the way of My plums. Bucket. Elizabeth picked a five gallon bucket all by herself. She shot on camera. There's a few in here that are really Green. greener than what we would like for processing these taste really good to eat but the ones that you really want for processing are these real dark purple ones so getting started with our blueberries the first thing we're going to do is wash these and then we're going to spread them out on this towel to dry before we freeze them You 
want to make sure you label anything you freeze because sometimes you don't know what you've got. Elizabeth's filling out our bag. We're just gonna label it blueberries 2024. Okay. So you can take these and layer them in um, trays and freeze them out like this and then put them into your bag so they don't stick together. Most of the time, blueberries are pretty good in the freezer about not turning into a block of ice and we're, we don't really have a lot of trouble getting them out of the bag. So I usually just dry them off as best I can and then get them into a freezer bag. So the girls use these and the boys um, for smoothies a lot. Elizabeth will make blueberry muffins, blueberry pancakes. But by and large, I think these get used for smoothies more than anything else. They do. Or pie. Elizabeth does make a mean blueberry pie. You think we'll need another bag? Maybe just a smaller bag. I think they're all gonna fit. This was about a gallon of, of blueberries. Maybe just over. Y'all did pretty good today about not eating everything we picked. Pierce did. With usually when I pick the blueberries, I no Pierce just sat there and ate all the time. But I usually end up eating a whole bag of blueberries. So we got a loaded down bag, gallon bag of blueberries. You ate these last few. Yes. Wait, no, put the bad one in there. And There's not a bad one. They're just smaller. A bad one. They're bad. And they're not bad if they're small. They're so, bad. Yeah. They're bad if they're small. Slam full like, bag um, of blueberries. Straight in the freezer. All right, so for the plums, we're not going to wash those to start with because some of those we're going to end up leaving out to ripen on the counter. We're basically just going to sort them at this point. at the beginning of the video about what we do with our plums. Plum cobbler. We use most of them by and large to make plum cobbler. And that's not something that a lot of families know anything about, but we have always I had plum trees and that's something that we started doing when I was a kid that my dad came up with. Basically, we just take the plum pulp after we process these down like I show you what we do today and make a pie filling out of it like you would do with any other fruit, blueberries, strawberries. And then self-fry them flour and well, sugar and she's milk. learned how to make this. So we have a video that we actually did probably a year and a half ago where we made a strawberry cobbler. So I'll link to that video. It's the same concept that we do for the plums, but you'll be able to see the pulp that we make out of this that we turn into uh, plum cobbler filling. So any of these that have a lot of green on them, just set those aside. Everything else we're gonna put into the bucket because we're gonna wash these in little small batches where we can get them washed. If they're really green, a little green is okay, but if there's they're a green. lot of green they're on green. them, put them up here and we'll leave them on the counter for a day. And then to get ripe. These will be ready to process tomorrow after they sit. So some fruit won't ripen on your counter. Um, plums will. These ones are perfect. Mm -hmm. Those dark ones are good for this. So once we get these it's washed, hot. we're going to put them in a big pot on the stove and put them on low heat. Are you making a cobbler? Not yet. We gotta make our, we gotta get our pulp from our plums. So you're gonna make a plop, a cobbler video? We'll let you do a cobbler video. How about Yay. that? Today? No. So we'll wash those in small batches. So we'll just get started with that. We're 
gonna go ahead and get these plums on very low heat with a lid on just till that pulp um, or the skin starts splitting Mushy. open where we can get in there with our hands and then we'll use our gloves to go in and just manually pull out all the pits. So Elizabeth's sorting through the last of our plums. She's picking out any that she picked that were too green and that are hard. And she's putting her soft ones over here that we're gonna wash and get into our pots. She learned a very important lesson today about how to properly pick plums for preserving. She was picking the ones she likes to eat. And she's like me, I like my plums half red, half green to eat. But that's not the best kind to put up. So all of these and these two colanders will just sit out for a day or two. We'll probably pick more plums in just a couple of days. And these will be perfect at that point. Perfectly ripe um, to get processed like what we're doing today. These we're not gonna wash because they're gonna sit on the counter for a couple of days. So you don't want to wash those because they'll start rotting and not ripening if uh, you wash them. Get those into our pot. Huge helper today. So we have lids on these pots so that the steam comes up and gets all of this fruit to where it's splitting open and we can go through and get the pulp out. Okay, so I wanna show you what we've got going on over here. I've already taken our first pot off, but I'm going to show you on the second one exactly how we do this. So you bring these up just barely to a little simmer, enough to get the peelings on your plums to split open. It's kinda of like you would do a tomato to get your skins off your tomato. Maybe a little bit more heat than what you would use for a tomato. So these are ready in this pot. There's a couple in here that still need to split open. Um, I actually took from this pot and put into this pot since we had a lot over here. And our first one that we did is here. So I'll show you how I get juice and pulp in just a minute. Okay, so we're gonna get these plums separated into pulp and juice. So I use a big slotted, whatever this is called, like this, and I dip out all of my plums. As you can see, the skins have split. We're just gonna put these into a pot. Do use something that's heat proof because these are hot right now. We've brought them just up to a simmer. So Pierce thought this juice looked great and it does, and it is, but it's not sweet like you would think it would be. It's very concentrated and it's very tart. And if you want to drink plum juice like you would drink grape juice, it needs to be diluted and sweetened. So there is still juice in with our pulp, but we've drained a lot of the concentrated juice out by getting our pulp out like this. And I'm gonna set this aside right here to cool. Just like I've got this first pot over here cooling. Because we're gonna go through this manually with our hands. Get the seeds out. And get the seeds out. In the meantime, I'm working on juice. We're gonna pour off the rest of this into this bowl just to cool. So the juice, you can make wine, jam, jelly, or just use it for juice. If you're gonna use it for juice, it does have to be diluted probably about halfway and then sugar needs to be added because it's not sweet. Looks like it should be, but it's not. It's extremely tart. Now we've got this one more pot over here that I'm going to get separated out into pulp and juice as well. So our plum pulp has cool enough for us to get into there with some gloves and not burn ourselves. And this is a pretty easy process. You, the pits will pop right out when you pick up the plums. And we're just gonna pull out all of our seeds, basically. All of the pulp is gonna go back in here. 
And this is just a little tedious process of manually pulling out these pits. Now some people will just take this mixture and kind of mash it down and get all the juice out and discard all the pulp, but we've always preserved our pulp. Now, typically what my dad will do with this is put it in the freezer bags and freeze this. But around here, our freezer space has been at a premium. And we've got a half of a steer coming in shortly. So, my goal is to can as much of this as possible so that it's shelf stable. And then we can just pull it off as we need to and use it. We may end up freezing some of this if we have more than what I want to deal with in the canner. This is pretty much it. So this is going to go on for a little while. Just pulling out the pits. I lost my helper from this morning. She would be really excited about wearing some gloves right now. She went next door to play with her second cousin. So I'm back in the kitchen by myself. So I was able to wrestle me a helper since my other one left me this morning. So we got Pearson here. He's pitting a pot of uh, these plums. I've got mine done. I do have one more big bowl that I have to do. It really didn't take as long as you would think, um, but that's my, my pulp. And I'll have his pot of pulp and then one more big bowl. We'll go from there. We got all of our pits out of our plum puree. So I've got three big containers of this. We're gonna go ahead and get this into our big pot and get this heated back up to a bowl. So here's our plum puree. We're gonna get that heated back up to a boil before we get it into jars to actually can it. Over here we have the juice. I have about two gallons of juice here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this strained up so any pulp that comes out of it I can throw over there into my plum puree. So I ended up with exactly two gallons of the plum juice. We did not add any sugar to these plums while we cooked them down. We did not add any water so it's just 100% plum juice. Looks like something that you could drink right out of the jug, but it's super tart, super concentrated, and looks better than it tastes right now. So we're just straining any little bit of pulp out of this so I can put it in with my plum puree. It's going to start going slow at this point because there's pulp in it. All right, we're back. The plum puree is simmering in this big pot. This is a bigger pot than what I need, but always make sure you have a large enough pot that will accommodate some expansion of your fruit as it heats. We have sterilized jars, and the way I sterilize my jars, I put clean wash jars on a sheet pan in the oven at 225 degrees for about 10 minutes, and they're ready to go at that point. I have some heated lids ready to go, and we have our water bath canner set up and ready to go. This has um, water up to the, the bottom of the basket in it, and it's just coming to a simmer at this point, so we are ready to get started. We're gonna go ahead and jar up our plums and get them in, into the water bath canner. But I'm canning this as a fruit puree, um, which means it needs about 15 minutes in the water bath canner once we get it into the jars. Plums are high acid fruits, so they don't need to be pressure canned. The water bath canner is fine for these. I like to use my narrow mouth jars or regular mouth jars for stuff like this that's liquidy and save my wide mouth jars for big stuff like pickles. Be careful with a hot fruit because it burns worse than hot water. 
kind of sticks to you. So when you're putting a hot liquid into your jars, you do want to have them on a little towel to keep them from shattering. These are already heated in the oven, so that would probably prevent it, but it's good insurance to have them on a little towel as well. Now for a fruit puree, you're supposed to only leave a fourth of an inch of head space at the top of your jar. I also have a little paper towel that's been moistened here to clean my rims with. And you'll just go hand tight on the bands and over to the pressure or to the water bath canner. Make sure you continue to um, stir your puree mixture frequently so it doesn't scorch on the bottom of your pan. I have a heavy bottom pan here, but there's still the possibility of scorching when you're simmering fruit because it's so thick and doesn't move around a lot. Now this puree could be turned into jam. It could be sweetened, whatever you want to do with it. So we have not sweetened this at all at this point. This is concentrated tart puree, uh, plum puree. When we take this out of the jars to use it, at that point we'll sweeten it and make it into whatever we want to at that point. We can do jam, but like I said earlier, we usually make plum cobbler with this. And typically, my dad freezes it in one quart containers. We're going to be canning it in one quart containers. Now for water bath canning, you do always sterilize your jars. If you're pressure canning, you don't necessarily have to sterilize your jars. You just want to start with really clean jars. But when you are water bath canning, it's important to sterilize your jars. We'll just keep on doing this till we fill up our water bath canner. All right, so we've got our water bath canner loaded down with our jars. We've got seven quarts in here. It's just now coming to a little boil. We're gonna drop these jars down into the hot water. The water should come about one inch above the tops of your jars. And typically, if you fill your water bath canner to the bottom of the basket when it's sitting up on the edges, um, that will get you to about an inch over seven quarts in your canner. So we're gonna let this come to a rolling boil then we'll time it for 15 minutes and these will be shelf stable at that point. Also, I do have a lid for the water bath canner and we'll just put that on top and get this up to a rolling boil. This particular canner actually has a little uh, gauge on top of it where it tells you where you should be um, before you start timing. Basically a rolling boil is where you need to be on your water bath canner. This is the rolling bowl that you're looking for, um, for being at temperature on your water bath canner. It has been 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and get these out of the water bath canner. And then you're going to want to use one of these jar grippers to get your jars out because they're very hot. Make sure that these go on to a towel on your counter, otherwise you will crack your jars going from this boiling water onto a cold countertop. All 
All right. So we're going to add a tiny bit of water back to our water bath canner. I have the juice on the stove, uh, or part of the juice on the stove. We had two gallons of juice out of this. And I'm going to can just seven quarts of the juice and the remainder I'm going to make plum jelly out of. Okay, so we're moving on to our juice and we've got this almost up to a boil. We're gonna go ahead and start getting it into our sterilized jars. Kind of the same procedure we went through with the pulp. Hot lids. Uh, sterilized jars and we'll get this juice in. So for juice versus actual pulp, you only need to process this in your water bath canner for five minutes. Again, this is a high acid fruit, so water bath canning for a short period of time once it's up to a boil like this is perfectly fine to make shelf stable juice. We got the water bath canner loaded up again. We're going to drop these quart jars down in there. Got one that's sitting a little wonky. Get that situated in here. There we go. And these will go for five minutes. Okay, so we've got our seven quarts of juice here, and we've got our seven quarts of pulp. Very pretty. Everything has pretty much, there's a couple of the juices that haven't sealed yet that we just took out. All of our pulp has sealed and several of the juices have already sealed since we got those out of the canner. Mm -hmm. 